Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on solving an inverse variation problem. Now remember that with inverse variation, we have a formula that looks like this. But the basic connection between the variables, say y and x, is that they're going in opposite directions. So every time that y increases, x would decrease. Or I could say that every time that y decreases, gets smaller, then x would increase. Okay, so before we get too deep into uh, my example problems, let's go ahead and look at some quick tips for solving variation problems in general. So we'll first start off with just writing down the formula for the type of variation. So in this video, all of these will be inverse variation, but you know, no matter what you're doing, go ahead and figure out what type you're solving. Then the next part we'll do is actually solve for the constant k uh, that's a part of our variation formula. And we'll use just a little bit of the, the information from the problem to actually figure out what that k is. Lastly, we'll use the value of k in our original formula and just go ahead and solve the rest of the problem. All right, so these three easy steps and you should be done. Let's give it a try with this one. So if y varies inversely with z and y equals 35 when z equals 10, find y when z equals 5. Okay, so the very first step we want to do is just recognize what type of variation problem is this. And this one actually tells us, it says y varies inversely with z. So y varies inversely with z, and there's my basic formula. Now we need to figure out what k is, so we'll use the next little bit of information that it gives us. So y equals 35 when z equals 10. So y equals 35, z equals 10. And notice how with that plugged in there, you have just enough information that you could figure out what the k is. So let's multiply both sides by 10, and we'll get that k is equal to 350. All right, looking good, looking good. Now that we know what k is, we'll go ahead and plug it back into the original formula. So this is y equals 350 all over z. And now we just wanna finish off the rest of the problem. So it says find y when z equals five. We'll plug in uh, z equals five and be able to figure out what y is. So z equals five. So 350 divided by five goes in there 70 times. And there's our answer. So again, you write down the formula, you solve for k, then you solve the rest of the problem using that last little bit of information it gives you. All right, let's look at another one of these. In this next problem, we have if w varies inversely with the cube of t and w equals 16 when t equals three, find w when t is equal to two. Okay, so this is another one where it kind of gives away the variation. It says w varies inversely with the cube of t. There is a slight change here though. It's the cube of t instead of just t. So we'll write this as w varies inversely with the cube of t, or a little, you know, t is going to be cubed. All right, now we need to figure out what k is equal to. Let's see, w equals 16 when t equals 3. So w equals 16, and we'll have 3 here on the bottom for t. All right, now let's see if we can solve for k. So let's see, 3 cubed would be 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27. Think of multiplying a 16 and a 27 together. So we get 432. And that is equal to our K. All right, so we have the K. We can put this back into our original formula. So W equals 432 all over uh, T cubed. All right, looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and finish off the rest of it. So find W when T equals two. Find w when t equals 2, so 2 cubed. So it looks like we'll be dividing, uh, say, 432 by 8. All right, so 432 divided by 8 is just 54. So w equals 54, and now this one is done. All right, let's do one more problem, and uh, let's make this last one more of a word problem, okay? So the current in a circuit varies inversely with the resistance. 
And if the current is, uh, say, 20 amps when the resistance is 5 ohms, find the current when the resistance is 16 ohms. Okay, so this is kind of a fun problem uh, in that it kind of gives me that this is an inverse relationship, but it's still kind of difficult to kind of keep track of what uh, everything should be. But it's okay, and it actually follows uh, exactly the same as our other two examples. So I know that this is an inverse relationship, and we're looking at uh, the current and the resistance. So I'll say the current in my circuit varies inversely with the resistance. So I equals K over R. All right. Now, if the current is 20 amps when the resistance is 5 ohms, that's that little bit of information we'll use to actually figure out the K. So the current is 20 when the resistance is 5. And notice how we can now solve for our K value by multiplying both sides by 5. So 100 equals K. All right, so now we can actually write uh, this into our original formula, giving us that uh, I equals 100 over R. All right, now let's go ahead and finish this off. Find the current when the resistance is 16 ohms. So we want to know what the current is, and the resistance is 16. All right, 100 divided by 16 will give us I equals 6.25, uh, and that's our current, so we'd say 6.25 amps. Now, some good intuition that you want to start picking up about these inverse variation problems is about how big the final answer should be. And to do that, kind of look at the change in your variables as you're going through here. Remember that in inverse uh, variation problems, that your variables are working in opposite directions. So let's see, find, uh, let's see, the current is 20 amps when the resistance is 5 ohms. Then later on, it looks like the ohms got larger, okay? So my resistance is increasing. That means the other variable should be decreasing. Let's see, what was my other variable? Let's see, current started at 20 and it went down to 6.25. So I know that this must be in the ballpark and is the right answer. All right. So hopefully that helps out a lot with these inverse variation problems. And if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.